with the summer sporadic E season here in Australia, I thought I'd do a quick video to tell how you know that 28 megahertz is open. After all, you might be wanting to go pedestrian mobile and have a reasonable chance of getting contacts. There's four main ways. The ways are applicable in other countries, but some of the exact details like frequencies may vary slightly. The first thing you do is you listen, tune the band to see if there are any beacons. Beacons on 28 megahertz operate between 28.2 and 28.3 megahertz. There's a group of international beacons all on 28.2 well, here in Australia, there's a collection between 28.250 and 28.270. Those beacons normally have a carrier, then identify in Morse code. So it's really handy if you know Morse. If you don't, then signals are often strong enough to use Morse decoding programs. That's number one. If you can identify the beacon, you can look them up, say, on the WIA website, and get an idea of where the band is open to. Keep listening to beacons throughout the day. Signals can come in and out, and propagation paths can change. So it might be north-south, and then later on, it might open up and become east-west and you start to get beacons from Western Australia. The length of paths can vary. Sometimes when there's only a little bit of enhancement, you might be able to hear beacons over longer paths, like between Tasmania and North Queensland. And then as the opening gets more intense, then closer in beacons might be audible. For instance, when I lived in Canberra, occasionally on 28 megahertz when the band was really open you could hear this beacon in Sydney a distance of only about 300 kilometers and when you've got the beacon in Sydney audible with only very short distances being copyable on 28 megahertz then you know the opening is intense and you might even have some luck on six meters sporadic E or even two meters the more intense the opening, the higher the frequency you can go and still make sporadic E contacts. So that's beacons. Have a tune around, learn to identify particular beacons, even if you don't know Morse for other things. It takes a little bit of practice, but you'll soon be able to identify at least the letters used in the common beacons that you hear. Then there's digital modes. Often people that use digital modes have their equipment online and there's websites that you can go to and see where they are being heard at. For instance, have a look at WhisperNet. There's a map on WhisperNet. You can select 10 meters and you can zoom into your area and you can see the various paths that are open. The thing with Whisper is it's really sensitive and works efficiently with very small amounts of signal. So a band may be just open on Whisper, but still not support SSB contacts. If you want to get an idea of how strong signals are being received at, then go to a particular station that's received a bunch of signals, look them up on the database and see the DB signal reports that are given. Apart from WhisperNet, there's also PSK Reporter. You can select by mode, band, whatever, and get an idea of other modes that have been able to span paths on 28 megahertz. So that's keeping an eye on digital modes. The other thing you can do is you can set up your own receiver and computer with the right software. Leave it on digital mode frequencies, whether it be Whisper, FT8, whatever, and see what you pick up. And again, if there's some good signal strengths, then you can go over to SSB and be confident of making contacts when the band is open. Number three is have a listen to 27 megahertz CB. There's more CB as than amateurs, so if the band is slightly open, there'll almost certainly be something on 27 megahertz. <laughs> Number one, number two, uh, 
are down here in Wollongong, um, and uh, mate, you're still cracking a signal down here. I actually met you at the field day, Scotty Roger. If it's open on 27 megahertz, most likely also open on 28. And then there's 28490. You can leave your receiver on that frequency. Here in Australia, that's quite popular. People are often calling on that frequency. And if there's no other activity, if it's fairly sparse, it might be a weekday, might be at night, that's a good frequency to leave your receiver on. Then when activity gets a bit higher, you've got other stations coming on. They may not be able to hear each other and may inadvertently cause interference to others. That's when you've got to think about other frequencies. If you want, you could put out a brief call on 28490 and then say that you're listening on some other frequency like 28480, 460, whatever. And then people hearing you on 490 might follow you down. I found that's a really good way of getting contacts if the band is open. And then if the band is really open, then you forget about 28490 completely. Find another frequency between 28.45 and 28.5 is most common and call CQ there. People will be tuning around, they might have band scopes on their equipment and see there's a little spike there so they'll be curious and hear you calling there. And as you'll be on your own frequency, you'll be in the clear. When the band's really active, it's just like HF during a contest. Pick any frequency that you're in the clear, keep calling, and the chances are people will come back to you. Echo VK3, Yankee Echo, and uh, VK5 KV, this is VK3 XPT. And you're peaking S5, VK3 Yankee Echo, pedestrian portable, VK5 King Victor, over. So yeah, that's a quick summary of how do you know 28 megahertz is open. It's a fun band here in Australia in summer. And so get on air, keep listening and put out a few calls, even if you don't think people are around. If you want to find out more about 10 meters and other aspects of amateur radio, particularly here in Australia, check out my Australian ham radio handbook. Visit my website, vk3ye.com and follow the links or search the title on Amazon. It's a popular book and it's a great getting started manual for amateur radio in Australia and experienced hams should also benefit.